My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Some days I feel like Jan Brady, except instead of Marsha, 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 it's index funds, index funds, index funds. As much as I love index funds, it's so tiresome constantly hearing that they're the only intelligent way to invest. That is simply not true. And after a roller coaster of a day where the Dow ultimately dipped 40 points, S&P declined 0.36, but NASDAQ lost 0.72%. Sell, 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 sell. I'm going to prove it to you. Now, I've said this before. It's going to work. I'm going to repeat it again. A low-cost S&P 500 index fund is a great way to get exposure to the greatest wealth creator of our time, the stock market. Although the bond market's been giving a pretty good run for the money. Now, if you don't have much capital and you're just trying to save for retirement, please put that money in an index fund. Imagine if I came out every night and just said, hi, I'm Jim Cramer. Buy index funds. See you tomorrow. I mean, I guess I could do that. But if I really believed in them, and I do, I also think that there's more to it. See, because if you've got some mad money, hence the show, to play with or invest, if you're mad at me about saying play, you can get better returns from owning a diversified portfolio of five to 10 stocks as long as you're willing to do the homework alongside that index fund. Plus, when you really nail a stock pick, you get that joyous feeling of winning the lottery. And I think this lottery is very much rigged in your favor. Think of it as an extra incentive to invest in the market rather than spending your money on something fun. Hey, I like that. You want some examples? All right, boy, we had it. Today was the day. Just look at the action in the healthcare sector, where we had some huge winners. This morning, totally out of nowhere, we learned that Biogen is seeking FDA approval for a potentially groundbreaking Alzheimer's drug. What did the stock do? It shot up 26% for the owners of a chunk of this company. What made this so shocking? Like many other drug companies, Biogen has been working on an Alzheimer's treatment for years. Listen, this is the holy grail of medicine, people. Everybody. Everybody's been searching for it. No one ever finds it. Johnson & Johnson failed. Pfizer failed. Eli Lilly failed. And early this year, it looked like Biogen had failed, too. In March, they halted their late-stage trial for this thing, a drug that might be able to slow the progress of Alzheimer's, which would be huge for the 5 million Americans suffering from disease. But how about for everybody else who's deadly, deathly afraid of getting it? But earlier today, in one of the most astounding turnabouts, I mean, truly, I would have devoted the whole, my whole morning show about this. As David Faber and I talked to this with Carl. It's really turning turn about Biogen tells that they've done a new analysis and the drug's working. Long duration, high dose administration is giving us all the right signs. Better cognition, improved ability to handle what are known as the activities of daily life, household chores, independently traveling, personal finance. So Biogen is resuming its trials after meeting with the FDA, first in June and again uh, yesterday. Yet the FDA is encouraging them to proceed with these studies. And in other words, it's not the company doing it. It's the FDA saying, hey, green light. This could be a game changer for anyone with Alzheimer's. If this thing works and the side effects are minimal, it could be the easily, I'm saying right now, the biggest drug in history. A blockbuster to end all blockbusters is exactly when I get off the desk with CEOs of the pharmaceutical industry. They all say it can't be done. You can't reverse the plaque. No wonder Biogen's stock club fired. I think it might have more room to run. So many analysts, so many analysts got burned when Biogen suspended the last clinical trial after saying they thought the things were pretty good, that they're gun shy. Almost all of them rate the stock. Oh, they were two prominent cells. While Biogen's had a big move here, you know, it's still down more than 50 points from where it was trading in March. That seems wrong to me. Biogen's profitable. It suddenly got a new major catalyst. I'm betting some of these analysts will be forced to upgrade the stock to a buy. And when they do, this one's going to go higher, maybe a lot higher. I bring this up because lightning's never going to strike that index fund of yours. It struck Biogen. Never. Of course, you also won't get crushed by any huge losers. I'm going to asterisk that, like what happened to Biogen in March. But if you're willing to do the homework, I believe the odds of picking winners outweigh the odds of ending up with a loser, again, alongside your index fund. Even without the new drug, Biogen was worth owning. It's a very profitable company, good balance sheet, a couple of terrific franchises, including some excellent multiple sclerosis drugs. That's why I think the move isn't over. But maybe uh, new drug data is a little too random for your taste. So let me give you a more gettable example. 
There's a guy we have on all the time on the show. His name's Michael Nidorf. I like him. Real charitable fellow, too. He's the CEO of Centene. It's a managed care company that handles government-sponsored health plans. I bring him on because he's the most informative executive I know when it comes to the incredibly difficult world that is health care. And also because, of course, his stock is incredibly cheap. Today, Centene reported a fine quarter and it rallied. To, not initially because people are so stupid. I, some people are more stupid. My mother would say, don't tell everyone, say everyone's stupid. That's not fair. It's a 34 years of wisdom there. I think it's got a lot more room to run. Centene's totally domestic, and unlike the other managed care names, it's a winner under any healthcare system other than a single payer. Now, as I've told you before, even if Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders end up in the White House, I doubt they have the votes in Congress to pay a single payer. There are just too many moderate Democratic senators who don't want to upend the whole healthcare system. Take Medicare for all off the table, and Centene's got, well, let's just say, a fabulous runway. Fabulous. Finally, there's Uber Kramer fave Bristol Myers. For ages, we've heard that Merck's big cancer immunotherapy drug, Keytruda, was beating the stuffing out of Bristol's cancer, cancer immunotherapy drug, Opdivo. But today, Bristol Myers reviewed some clinical trial data that showed Opdivo taking together with another one of their drugs, Yervoy, can extend the lives of patients with untreated lung cancer. This means the future is looking a lot brighter for Opdivo than people thought until today. To me, this gives you one more reason to like Bristol Myers going into his transformational acquisition with Celgene. Yet the stock sells at 12 times next year's earnings, even after today's 2% run? Are you kidding me? I've been like a broken record in this one. Urging you to trust CEO Giovanni Caforio and buy the darn stock. With these new Optivo results, a brilliant management team, and the Celgene deal, I think Bristol Myers can perform a lot better than the S&P 500 Index Fund. Plus, hey, 3% yield? What's the matter with that? Oh, and if you're worried about a slowdown in the economy, don't you think Bristol Myers is exactly what you should be buying? Concerned about a trade war? Buy Bristol Mars. Unsettled by Brexit? Buy Bristol Mars. Skeptical that the Fed will keep cutting interest rates? Buy Bristol Mars. Now, again, I love index funds. I love index funds. I love the index fund. I love index fund. Marsha! Everyone should have some index fund exposure in their retirement account. But if you want to hit big, well, it's also good to try to pick some individual stocks alongside of those index funds. Stocks like Biogen or Centene. I think they both have more upside, as does Bristol Myers. I could say the same thing about Procter Gamble or Disney, but neither of them is cheap. Of course, you can also end up owning losers. I know the good news for Bristol Myers was, yes, bad news for Merkel. I think when they report, it's going to be a pretty good number. Hasbro is one of the biggest losers today. More than that later. But even after today's vicious 16% decline, it's still up 23% for the year. Hey, not so bad. Oh, and notice I did not pick any stocks with economic sensitivity or trade war issues. Just tonight, we got news from Texas Instruments. It's all the weakness across the board. That was ugly. It brought down the whole semi. Uh, uh, cohort in the after uh, hours. Uh, those stocks are often too hard to own, although I think Texas Instruments overdid it on the gloom. But the ones I mentioned, I know with a little homework, these gains can be yours. And I do believe they will outweigh the losses and they'll be a nice, uh, let's just say, a sidekick, okay? Sidekick to, hedge, to uh, index funds. Bottom line, I don't blame anyone who lacks the time or inclination to put in the homework that's necessary if you're going to own individual stocks. But if you do have the time, if you're willing to do the work, why not try to beat the averages with a Biogen or a Centene or a Bristol Myers? Tom in Illinois, Tom. Jim, thanks for taking my call. Of course, Tom. Uh, Jim, I bought some shares of Viacom B, thinking that the, uh, the merger between CBS and Viacom would help uh, bring up both shares. And uh, obviously, it hasn't been the case. And I'm wondering, what is your feeling on this merger? And also, what is your feeling on Viacom B? Is it still hanging on to it for now, or what do you think? Tom, you can't see the show, but I have a Dunn's cap on. And the reason I do that is because I, too, like Viacom. I bought it from my charitable trust, and I feel like a complete idiot. I should be sentenced to be in the corner, and I should also have to write on the blackboard a thousand times, I am an idiot because I recommended Viacom, and my charitable trust has been hurt. I, too, felt that CBS Viacom would be a potent and, and really powerful combination. It's obviously not worked. I'm not going to sell it because it's too cheap down here. But let's just say I'm going to have to spend this whole darn period with my dunce cap on. Thank you for the call. Josh in North Carolina, Josh. Booyah, Jim, from the Tar Heel State. How you doing? I am doing well. How about you? I am doing great. Jim, the company I wanted to ask you about today is Northrop Grumman. Uh, I like it. Lots of innovation. Uh, I think they've got the cutting edge on a lot of things, but my concern is a pullback in defense spending by the U.S. government. What are your thoughts? Okay, listen, you went, you're from North Carolina? Why do you want to pick... 
Why do you want to pit, pick a, a running back who sees, who's on a team with a quarterback who sees ghosts? I want you to buy Christian McCaffrey. Who's Christian McCaffrey? It's United Technologies. Stick with the program. All right, as long as you're willing to do the homework, you can really feel like you're winning the lottery with the right stock picks. How about the Biojet? Right? How about the Centene? How about the Bristol Mars? Just look at today's winners. Oh, man, money tonight. Trouble in toilet? Wow, Hasbro took a tumble today. Wasn't that not nasty? I'm going to sit down with the CEO. He comes on even if it's a bad day. Then, is Beyond Meat, as great as it is and tasty as it is, a little too much like GoPro? And Logitech has been under pressure this year, but the stock still remains up year to date. Is it worth considering the company here after some incredible video conferencing soft uh, hardware it's introducing? You know, I got the CEO of Fresh Wolf's report. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.